Welcome to our final segment. It's now time to create our animation, and the first step we need to complete to achieve that is to turn on our animation toolbar. So, to do that, go up to the Customize pull-down menu, choose Toolbars, look down here until you find your animation toolbar. There it is. Click it, and there you go. You've got your animation toolbar. The next thing to do is to return to the properties for the query table. So once again, right click there, go down to properties. We're now going to try out the time tab. And if you go there, you need to click this box by enable time on this layer. And field format is going to be date time. So we stick with that. Uh, our time interval is not going to be hours. It's actually going to be single years. So we change this to one. And from the pull down menu, we go with years. Um, and with that, we, we're not concerned about time zone or time offsets. So uh, with that, we can simply click OK. And having done that, we can go up to our animation toolbar and click on the the uh, pull down menu by animation and choose create time animation and it tells us the time animation track has been created successfully so you just click OK. Okay and now we can go back to our uh, animation toolbar once more go to this icon for animation control and uh, from the resulting um, menu choose options And uh, we don't want to do this by uh, overall duration. Instead, we want to do it on the basis of the number of frames. So click that. Tell it to calculate. Uh, OK, it's 31 flip frames. Uh, it's got a frame duration of 0.3 seconds. Um, that seems a bit fast, so I'm going to reset that to 1. And um, I don't actually want to restore state after playing, so I'm going to un unclick that. And I'm going to hit the Go button here. So we just shift this out of the way. And as it goes through the different years, you can uh, see the, the shadings change in the, in the various countries. Um, unfortunately, the, the labels are flashing on and off again, but that's something we'll resolve in the final animation. So uh, essentially, that seems to be working. And, and so I will now close down the animation controls. Up until now, we've been working in what's known as design view. We're now going to switch to what's called layout view instead. And uh, the views are controlled down here. So right now, this is design view. We're going to switch over to layout view by clicking on this button here. And layout view is essentially used for generating, generating the um, representation of the map that you want to present to your ultimate user. Uh, you may notice that this is defaulting to an 8.5 by 11 page. Uh, that can be changed if you need to. Uh, it seems to me like the first thing I need to do with this is it would probably make more sense to have this in a landscape view. So I'm just going to go up to the uh, File pull-down menu, go to Page and Print Setup, select that, and here I'm going to switch to Landscape and see how that looks. Okay, now we need to make some further adjustments to our data frame, so we're going to do that now by clicking on the Select button, then selecting our data frame, like so. Then we just set about and start pulling the borders where we want them. And we just keep nudging them along, and uh, gradually we get to where we need to be. So let's just scroll up a little bit and see where we stand now. And uh, that's looking better. Well, no, not quite. We've got to make one little adjustment up top there. And let's see maybe how it looks at the bottom. And tweak that a little bit. And at that point, I'd say we're in pretty good shape. We just want to do a little bit of zooming in, get focused on uh, the European countries. And I 
think that's a considerable improvement right there. All right, we're now going to add a uh, heading for this uh, this chart so that the user can more readily tell uh, what year of data they're looking at. So go to the Insert menu, choose Dynamic Text, and then from within there, choose Data Frame Time. And then click and drag that to wherever you want it on the page. And you can then double click on that to edit its properties. So for example, you can change its symbol. Let's try that again. All right, there we go. Uh, you can change the color to something more to your liking. For example, burnt umber. Uh, you can change the typeface. So let's just see what we've got here. Lots and lots of choices. Let's say Book Antigua and go with a somewhat larger font, say 18, bold, and that's looking pretty good. So let's click OK. And then click OK again, and we've got our we've got our uh, new title. So now insert, go to legend, and you've got legend items, query table, and counties. You countries you don't want countries, so you move that back over to the left, then click next. And we get onto the frame, so you can ch choose what kind of border you want. Let's go with the one point background. Uh, give it a little bit of a background so it'll pop out a little bit more. Go with the yellow. Uh, you could also go with a drop shadow if you want. So, for example, we might try gray 20%. Next, and then just cruise on to the next uh, menu here. And there's our legend. So just look for where you've got a little bit of extra space. Uh, maybe over, maybe over Russia. There seems to be some space over there. Okay. And size it to fit your your figure a little bit better and make it more legible. Okay. Now uh, in our key, um, users might not be, might not know how to. How to interpret adult UE rate. So we're going to change that by going over to the menu, double clicking on that, and typing in something that's a little bit more easily understandable. And once we enter that, it will automatically change on the key. So that should be a little bit easier for users, users to comprehend. Um, we also got some issues with the query table. So Double click on the key for that, go to items, um, for query table, click on style, properties, and then unclick show layer name so that will no, no longer show up on the key. Click OK. And once again, click OK. And a third time. OK. So that's cleaned up a bit. We relocate it again. Click outside the uh, display to deselect it. And okay, we're now going to uh, work on cleaning up the uh, key a little bit more to make the uh, number somewhat more intuitive. So we're going to double click on the query table to open up its uh, properties. Go to the Symbology tab, and then click on Label, or right click rather, and choose Format Labels. Then in that, we're just going to change it to Percentage. Click on numeric options, and we don't need that many decimal places. Maybe one would suffice. And click OK. Another OK. And one final time, OK. Uh, you may note that we've got some breaks at uh, fractional percentages. Um, if you wanted to end at, say, even 5% breaks, say 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 5 to 15, etc., you could do that if you so chose. Um, and as one final adjustment to the key, um, on second thought, I decided to get rid of that yellow background, make it gray instead, and get rid of the drop shadow. So that's pretty easily done, as shown here. Just click OK. And uh, maybe go for a somewhat lighter shade of gray. Click OK again, and I think that's just about perfect.
If you look at the title now on this figure, it says current date, current data frame time off to uh, change that off to an actual uh, date. You have to go back to your animation toolbar, click on the pull down for animation, click on create time animation. It tells you that's been successful. You click OK. Then you go up to the animation control, click on that, click on options. Um, we don't want to do it by duration. We want to do it by number of frames which we will now calculate by clicking on the Calculate button. It's 31 frames. Uh, one second a piece. Uh, I think we might change that to two. And then we unclick Restore State After Playing. And having done that, we can now run our animation. And if you look at this now, the uh, date now appears with each frame. Um, looks like we're going to have to relocate our key a little bit since it's overlapping the, the, the date stamp, but other than that, it's looking pretty good. All right, so we're, we're basically satisfied that the animation is working. Uh, we want to quickly update this, uh, this heading so it no longer says current data frame time. Let's just make it current year instead. That should be a little bit more intuitive for the user. Okay, then we can just click OK, and then let's move that uh, over a little bit, and perhaps we could take the key and move that down as well, just to make sure it's out of the way. All right, so we're now satisfied that things are basically working as they should, so we're going to close down the animation controls, and we're going to export this to an AVI file. So go to your animation pull-down menu for export animation, click on export, um, we're going to go with our default settings here, so just click OK. And it's now in the process of exporting it to the AVI file. Now this is going to take a while, so um, I will probably come back in a, I will probably come back in a few minutes and uh, show you the final product. Okay, here's the uh, final animation running. Uh, I think it took about um, probably 20 or 30 minutes for this to, uh, to fully render, but uh, here it is. Looks like everything's running pretty smoothly. Um, anyway, I, I hope I've uh, given you a good flavor for what uh, ArcGIS is about. I, I've really just scratched the surface. There's far, far more to learn than I could possibly tell you in uh, a relatively brief period of time, but um, I hope this has given you a feel for what it's about and perhaps inspired you to uh, go off and try it out for yourself. So thank you for your time.